I've never seen it this wet before, have you? <laughs> yeah. C Hello, according to Interweb, he started already. According to the Interweb, <laughs> we should normally get about three inches at this time of year. <laughs> shouldn't we? How much is three inches? <laughs> oh, about God, that. God, like about that. About three inches. I'll tell you what, eight inches I've had this month. <laughs> Eight inches. You check it up on oh. Google. Oh, that a bit phone then. <sighs> Hello. Hi, how are you doing? Hello, mate. Yes. Sorry, say that again. I think that means we've got to go. So we were talking about how, how we should have had three inches, but we've actually had about eight inches oh. of rain in the last month. Of rain. See if you let me finish. In the <sighs> last eight inches of rain in the last month. It is towards the end of July. It's what, 12 degrees? 12 degrees today. So why are we talking about the weather anyway? Well, it's what us Brits are good at, isn't it, talking about the weather? It is. Uh, but the second reason is that it's been really seriously affecting the bees. And thirdly, which is why we're here, we finally got here, yeah. it's affected the building of this. of this, which is Sherlock's Muse. So if you're quite new to the channel, or if you've just not been watching for a while, <laughs> then... Uh, Pay attention! <laughs> we are adopting five-year-old Eurasian eagle owl called Sherlock from a local wildlife rescue centre. We're going to be giving it a new home here on our croft and we're yeah. building this quite heavy-duty uh, muse for it which is about 10 metres long, about 4 metres wide and it's going to give it loads more space to enjoy its life. It is, this is just its flight area. Now, Sean was really cracking on with it to start with, but then, of course, the weather turned and it's just been horrible for about a month yeah, now, hasn't it? It's it has. just, it literally has rained every single day and it's quite windy. And it has put a bit of a pause, a bit of a slowdown on building the muse. But here's what he's done so far. So that's his flight area, and as we're walking into this little bit here, this bit here, as you can see where the concrete plinths are, this is going to be the shed area, and the back area here is going to be his little indoor space. I say little, but it's quite a roomy indoor space. He'll still be able to spread his wings in there. So which has been the hardest bit so far? The hardest bit so far is getting these joists in up here. They're just heavy and fidgety to, to measure. Uh, but once they're in and they're nice and stable, yeah, all good. How have you managed to get all the kind of posts level so that it's the same level all the way across? Ah, yes, because the plinths are not level, but these at the top are. And that's easy. You just basically use the joists as a level. You go from one end to the other, get a spirit level on there, make sure it's level and then mark it off. It's easy. So what's left to do? All this top part is going to be welded mesh. The bottom part is going to be panelled off and that's going to be easy because it's just a matter of getting them all at the right length before you start and then just hitting them in with a nail gun. So when's it going to be finished? Two weeks. <laughs> Said that last like, time. Uh, is it going to be like the chicken coop where we're like still doing it next April? Yes. <laughs> Hopefully it's not going to take too long. Once the frame's up, the rest of it should be pretty straightforward. We just need the weather to be like summer again. We do. <laughs> or at least stop raining so that Sean can crack on with it. A lot of people have also been asking, what's going on with the train barn? Well, not a lot. As you can probably see, it's still very dark and dingy and empty. Uh, we are waiting for the builder. Up here where we live in the Highlands, there's not a lot of builders to choose from. Uh, the one we want is a very good builder with a good reputation, so we're just having to wait for him to get some free time. The thing that's holding it up is some equipment that he's waiting for that he needs to help with the renovations. And we've been told that early August, first couple of weeks in August, we should be all right to go. So we're just waiting for that. 
We're still hoping to get it completed in time for the end of the autumn, so hopefully I can get cracking starting the layout and the boarding and everything, and it should make for a good winter project. The bad weather's also affected the new apiary. Now the ground's very boggy. It does get boggy anyway, but it's been very boggy over the last few days because the rain's just not stopped. Now it's not affecting the hives too much because they're raised up on pallets. Although we are going to get some stands for the hives because if it is gonna remain boggy all the way through autumn and winter and spring, uh, we're gonna put some weatherproof membrane and then a stand just to stop any moisture being soaked up by the beehive itself so that they can stay nice and warm and dry we don't get any mold in the hives all the colonies of bees on this new apiary started as nukes which is a small colony of bees it's about five or six frames and when we transfer them into the hive we also add another five of these empty frames of foundation why do we do that well, if the colony is going to succeed and survive over winter to give us honey next year, it needs to grow. To grow, the queen needs somewhere to lay eggs that will form new bees. If these are not drawn out, she's got nothing to lay the eggs in, which means the colony won't grow. If the colony doesn't grow, it might not survive the winter. Remember the colony that swarmed last year a little bit late in the season and it wasn't able to build the numbers back up in time and it died over the cold winter. For the bees to be able to draw out those frames with wax, they need food and energy. Now normally they'd be out foraging and bringing back nectar and pollen, but if the weather's that bad and they can't get out, then that slows down their ability to be able to draw out the frames. If they can't draw out the frames, there's nowhere for the queen to lay new eggs, and so the colony won't grow. So I've got to help them, and this is what we use to help them. It's called a rapid feeder, and basically we just fill that with sugary gloop. It's basically one part sugar dissolved in one part water. And the bees use it for food and energy when they can't get out and it helps them to draw out the frames and build the hive. Keep your fingers crossed that this sunshine makes a bit more of an appearance over the next few weeks because I think the bees really could do with it. I am a bit of a worrier and a bit of an overthinker and they'll probably be absolutely fine because I'm doing everything I can to get them through this patch of bad weather. But I do need to make sure that the colony really grows quite fast over the next few weeks so that they survive the winter. And that way next year, hopefully, again, fingers crossed, we could see quite a bit of honey. If you follow us on any of the like loads of social media, yes. there's loads now, isn't there? There's Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, threads. I thought that was a movie from 80s about nuclear war. It is, in Sheffield. But if you follow us on social media, you might have seen about a week ago that we got some honey from the bees. <laughs> People were going absolutely crazy for it. And there was only like five jars. <laughs> it wasn't like a, a full super of honey that we got. It was just one frame that we were testing out yes. uh, to see what it was like. And we were kind of giving it to the neighbors to see what they thought. But it was lovely, the smell in the house when we were, because we, we haven't got the honey extraction equipment yet. So we used a really old traditional method, which is basically you, you cut the, 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 the honeycomb and you just mash it up and then strain it a few times. And the color was like this really lovely golden dark brown. And it was so sweet. It was lovely. You could actually taste like a bit of heather and, and, and like vanilla and the wildflowers. Yes. It was beautiful, not too runny, not too thick. And the neighbors loved it. So we are going to be selling it when we start producing it properly, which I think will be next year yeah. now, along with some of Sean's homemade marmalade, which you've been making for a couple of years, haven't you? I have, yes. Just 
Yeah, just selling to the locals. Yeah, and we're going to be you're going to be able to buy all that online. So maybe from later this year or next year. So keep an eye out for that. What you don't have to wait until the end of the year for or next year is our brand new calendars. Yay! Zzz, zzz. Zzz. Calendars two. So for 2024, we've got two calendars out. One is our normal annual Foxes Afloat calendar which has got 13, work this out, 13 of our favourite photos. Yeah, front cover. Yeah, the front cover's a different <laughs> one. Uh, and, and it's of us and, and the animals and the highlands and the landscapes and everything. Uh, it's a really beautiful calendar. Uh, we're going to be donating 10% of the profits to mental health and autism charities. Uh, you can pre-order that now. There's a link and a QR code uh, on screen. It's also down in the video description and you can pre-order those. We're going to start sending them out in September, but you can secure yours because they always sell out every year. They do. Every year they sell out. So you can pre-order yours now, pay for it, secure it, and then you kind of got yours secured. And as soon as we get to take the delivery of them in September, we're going to start posting them out. Yeah. This year, oh, we've also got a second calendar uh, which we are releasing at the same time. So you, these will start shipping in September too. This is a little bit different. So all the profits from this one are going to a charity that I'm an ambassador for, which is called Man Up. It's a men's mental health charity here in the UK. And it's a bit of a cheeky, naturist calendar is this one it is so there's no like full frontal nudity it's not pornographic or anything it's very tasteful inspirational aspirational photographs uh, all kind of there to promote body positivity and mental health yeah. awareness uh, so check that one out as well it's the same price as the foxes afloat calendar we're shipping them out at the same time in fact why not order both oh yes you can have one in each room <laughs> Uh, so you can check them both out on our website foxesafloat.com forward slash calendars or just click the calendars tab on our website there's also links in the video description too right have we done enough selling i think so <laughs> it's all for charity we do it for it charity is. it's for charity uh, if you want more details on any of that there's links down in the video description but that is it for this week Oh, please bring us some sunshine. We ought to have practiced that more come and wise dance, didn't we? Bring me sunshine. Bring me sunshine. Yeah, we could have done that. <laughs> Hope you've enjoyed this vlog. If you have, if you're not already, please subscribe to the channel. Give the video a thumbs up. And if you hit the wibbly wobbly notification bell, YouTube will give you a little nudge every time we release a new video, normally every Friday. But we do release some shorts as well. We do. And the little uh, odd surprise video. Yeah. If you want to help support the channel, buy a calendar. Uh, or you could join us on Patreon or as a YouTube member you get some exclusive content and photos and blogs and videos and things like that. It's more rubbish. And it helps to support the channel and helps us to keep the bees and the chickens and Sherlock and... And mainly keep this going. And keep the videos going. It's been nice seeing you. Take care of yourself. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye. ta -ra. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six shiny i've got a right shine going on there middle of july and it's 12 degrees it's freezing it's calmed out he's had a few cat powders i've got me all me, me, me full body over all, all over warmer or whatever it's called but we're off jml anyway oh i hate this and that's it i've also I'm, i've already said i don't know oh, oh, cold cold hey we can't do bring me sunshine <laughs>